Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Ask the Experts for Tuesday, March 15. My name is Carl Kapalingwa. I'm the market analyst over here at Think Markets Australia, and it is a pleasure to be with you as we delve into everything markets and what a tumultuous time it has been. An old saying comes to mind at times like this, don't get bitter, get better. And today's presentation is all about giving you the tools to avoid losses and to lock in profits before they do turn into losses. Let's get started. I thought I might just have a quick look at the ASX 200 uh, and check some of the key levels that we need to know about. Uh, we are stuck in the middle, nothing's changed in that regard, so we are still very much in this uh, sideways pattern through here. Uh, in this trading range, definitely between 73.57 uh, and down there to 69.59, probably, not probably, definitely very little reason to take significant risks until we break uh, one way or the other out of them. Yesterday was an encouraging day, you know, we popped off that 69.59, made that light there at 69.68, and pressuring uh, that short-term downtrend zone there in pink. And really, I thought today we're gonna to get a look at that um, long-term trend zone. Uh, unfortunately, um, US markets, particularly NASDAQ, didn't come to the party. You know, this zone I think is, is, is very important. And I'll give you sort of a little level around here. I mean, that peak uh, at 71.99 is important. But if we, if we look at uh, what the dynamic number is going to be, so this number will change. And I'll, I'll just highlight that candle and then I'll, I'll head over here uh, to the uh, interpretation, which you can't see, but it's slightly off screen. Uh, 2.33 EMA, 71.75, and that's the bottom of the zone. The top of the zone is 72.40. So let me just uh, put a mark in here, 72.40. Um, that will give us an indication before 73.57. And that's kind of the point I'm going for here. If we can, if we can close above 72.40, uh, I think that's the first key level to tell us we are actually moving back into an uptrend phase and then 73.57 is that final level. So just to give you an idea of how to manage your risk, I think fairly risk neutral here, very small positions on some nice charts if we can find them, but broader portfolio fairly risk neutral, starting to maybe put a little bit, a bit of a nibble out there at 70, a close above 72.40 and I think then um, really putting some serious weight back into our portfolios above 73.57. Uh, now, given that we're risk neutral, I don't think we need to be um, talking about shorts, but uh, shorts would, I think, start to come into play below 69.59, and then most definitely below 67.58. We are in an official bear market, in my opinion. Okay, uh, we do have, uh, interestingly, Jill's uh, questioned some uh, indices here. And NDQ, which I'm guessing is the NASDAQ, because I don't think there is a, a, a a code there for NDQ on the stock. So let's uh, have a look at the NASDAQ. And because I am in new computer territory, I haven't yet had a chance to put all the new, uh, or replace, I guess, the lines and the labels on some of these that you would normally see perhaps on Ausbiz or through my Twitter. Uh, so I will have to um, just fish out some levels for you. Uh, Jill, this one looks terrible. Uh, this really led global markets down well before Putin decided decided to do anything in the Ukraine, you know, and, and and I think that the headlines and people will look back on this period saying, oh well, that really crashed the markets. But markets were in big trouble for a long time before this. In fact, really uh, since the start of January when we broke through uh, this this long term trend zone, and like clockwork now, these uh, dynamic. Uh, zones which were previously support. You can see how well uh, they behaved as support in the past, certainly the short term light green zone. Uh, in the long term here, uh, they are doing the same sort of job now, uh, but in reverse, pushing prices lower. Uh, and that's uh, not necessarily a bad thing if you know how to read these charts, because uh, you would have taken a great deal of risk off the table a long time ago if you did know how to read them. Uh, but it also gives us some interesting uh, levels if we can get back above. So uh, we talked about that uh, that sort of intermediate level uh, on, on the ASX 200. There was uh, 7240 at the top of my head. And we're getting some intermediate levels here. So I'm just going to click on this and I'll give you some levels here if you're a NASDAQ watcher. Uh, it will go off screen because my numbers are off screen here uh, in terms of the data points. And anywhere between sort of uh, 13, uh, let's call it 13,380 and 13,650 uh, is the zone here. So close above that would start to be positive. Uh, and then really ultimately, we, we wouldn't uh, start to wade back into risk until we got above that high there, which is about 14,509. Uh, and that is pretty much corresponding with the top of that long-term downtrend zone. Until then, I can't see any reason to buy this market. Uh, in fact, I think you're, uh, unlike where I said with Australia, we're probably not yet in, in that shorting um, stage yet. 
Uh, this one it just looks so terrible. Uh, in terms of support points though, there, there could be some support coming in sort of around here. We're not far away from it, but I'm not sure if that provides a support point or really just another breakdown point. Uh, if we get below there, then we could fall even faster. Uh, and then the, the big sort of support, well, there's, look, there's one there definitely, isn't there? So there is a zone here around 12,000, but failing 12, uh, then 10.5 is probably the ultimate target. And look, anything can happen. The S&P 500 is the other request from Jill. And pretty similar, isn't it? Uh, in terms of the fact that we have moved beneath those uh, what were dynamic support zones. Uh, dynamic support zones now acting as uh, resistance zones. Uh, and yeah, look, it's pretty, pretty shaky here. If we get below this level here, uh, it could be a little bit of lights out for US markets and support zones, probably not too far away. Maybe we could see a three handle though um, on this next leg down. But uh, you know, it's all about probabilities. Uh, my analysis is not me telling you what is going to happen in the future because I don't know what's gonna happen. That's impossible. I'm just telling you what appears to be happening in terms of demand and supply because that's what we're looking at. Candles, charts are just a schedule for demand and supply. And we're looking at the balance of probabilities. Looking at this chart and where demand and supply is situated and that the balance or imbalance between those two uh, factors in the market, what is the, the highest probability for the future? Is the probability that all of a sudden the S&P 500 does this? Is that the, is that the pro highest probability or is it more likely uh, that it does this? Okay, and that's really all we're trying to decide here with any chart that we're looking at. Let's get into some stocks now. The first one is SVL, which is, uh, there we go, Silver Mines. Uh, this one, incidentally, is for John, and it's looking okay. Look, uh, you know, it's a bit flat, isn't it? I think that's probably the, the key takeaway here. We do have a little bit of a short-term uptrend. We do have a long-term uptrend that is trying to develop here. Uh, but look, encouragingly, I think we, we've got a, a bit of a trend higher in those um, swing lows. We have broken above a little level here. It's not unusual to see um, supply coming in at this level, which could force prices down into what we call a test or a retest of that uh, previous point of previous point of supply. Uh, so this is a point of supply here, which we, we trust will act as a point of demand. Probability suggests. If I had it, look, there's more than enough in here to hold it. If I didn't have it though, I'm probably not rushing out to buy it. What I would need to see to fall into that category of buying, that's what we want. So that's sort of a candle uh, in and around the current zone, I think uh, John would be very encouraging from here to tell us that the demand that has started to come in, and there's actually some nice volume, there's some interest in the market here. Okay, and volume is, you always say it's like the volume in your stereo, on your stereo, and, and the more volume we have, the more interest there is out there, the more people are learning about this. And uh, that's pretty good. So if we see uh, this candle coming in, then it would be become a buy uh, rather than just a hold. Now, the next one for John is ARB, uh, which is ARB Corporation. Looks a bit like the S&P 500. Looks a lot like the NASDAQ. And uh, straight away, we have some issues here, don't we? We've got the short-term uh, trend, which is well-established. Uh, pointing to the downside. We've got the long-term trend, which I think is, is, is now officially down. Uh, and then we've got the interactions with those trend zones, which haven't gone all that well. And uh, the key here in terms of, uh, we talk about often in these sessions, uh, this idea of say managing uh, our exits and not to um, try and say, John, that uh, you know, you're know you remiss at any stage if you've still got this one. Uh, but uh, this, this uh, big supply candle here, uh, into that zone it is bad, uh, but it's the, it's the response to that candle. That's the key. So, um, you know, I think I, I put out a tweet today about, you know, if you, if you haven't done well with, with your stocks over the last couple of months, don't get bitter about it, get better about it and, and learn some of these um, tools in terms of technical analysis to help you next time. So uh, the supply candle is, is a huge heads up that something's not right. Uh, but th the key is, is not even the candle. Uh, it's, it's this next candle here. Uh, this this candle here is telling. Uh, so if this is uh, bad, the fact that we had such a muted rally uh, into that uh, that range created by that candle uh, is, is just disastrous. Uh, we, we closed back off those highs again. And it, you've got to remember the mentality of, of an uptrend is, is, is really all about, I'm just stylizing here, all about buying, buying dips, right? Uh, and when uh, when prices come down, the mentality is the stock is cheap and therefore I need to buy. And we had an opportunity in what was, let's face it, still a, a healthy overall uptrend to buy the dip and the market said, no, thank you. 
Okay, the, the sentiment, the psychology of this stock going from uh, very clearly, uh, you know, buy the dip over here uh, is now uh, really, uh, in, in two words, uh, no thanks. Okay, I'm a pass. And, 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 and pass is enough uh, to change a trend, really. Uh, because you, you need to have an excess of demand over supply. And if you're at a pass now in terms of demand, it doesn't take all that much supply uh, to do this now uh, and push you lower, okay? Uh, and then there were some other telling signs above, apart from that. Okay, uh, as we go through, what do we do from here? Um, could I hold it? it? It's tough to call it a hold, just on the basis that this short-term downtrend is so well established uh, and there's very little evidence as yet that the demand is coming in in any, uh, in any sort of significance uh, to overwhelm the supply that is clearly in the system and therefore push it back up. Uh, now, I didn't want to draw that one, so let's get rid of that. Uh, and the reason why I draw this horizontal line is because I'm looking for, for targets to the downside or a proximity to support where we may see a bounce. Okay, uh, And given that there's still a, probably a, a fair distance uh, to that downside, I'm, I'm struggling to even call it a hold, um, and it's definitely not a buy. Okay, so buy, hold, or sell, I'm going to go for an avoid. Uh, and borderline, uh, borderline sell here. Now here's the thing about probabilities, I could be wrong, uh, and uh, there's a little white candle for me today, that's very encouraging. Uh, more the probability, I would suggest, is more like this, okay? But I could be completely wrong having said, don't buy this or if you've got it, sell it, and it could be up here uh, in three weeks time. That is absolutely possible. But what we're doing today is talking about what is probable, not what is possible. Thank you, John. This is for Roberto now. He says, can you please look at TPD? TPD, I can. Uh, there we go. Uh, Talon Energy, good one. Haven't heard of that one. He's telling me it's an oil explorer with a stake in exploration in Mongolia. Very geographically handy to China, which will require an additional 4 million barrels this year compared to existing consumption levels. I bought on price trending above 50 and, oh, 50 and 100 moving averages is why he bought. Apart from losing my last few months, a positive trend may have returned given obvious oil supply pressures. Okay, that's a substantial explanation there. Uh, it's, it's not bad. It's a bit sketchy because um, given that it's a, a one cent stock here. So this is one cent, this is below one cent down here, and this is above one cent. Uh, we tend to have these very, um, you know, a point one cent of a move uh, increments, uh, and they tend to be quite sketchy. In terms of the interest, it has uh, diminished somewhat, I would suggest, uh, through here. Uh, and you would need something more like this sort of interest through, through here to get it going again. However, uh, with the long-term trend, I believe, still up, and you can see it's turned back to dark green here, and the short-term trend up, uh, and a reasonable move here that has not been met by uh, too much selling, uh, given the fact that today, let me get rid of that horrible blue line, uh, today is a pretty bad day for the rest of the energy sector, is encouraging. Uh, so if I had it, there's certainly enough here on the basis of the technicals to hold on to it. However, I would prefer to see more evidence in terms of the price action and the volume to call it a buy. Now, what would I need to see in terms of the price action? Uh, I'd need to see, look, if we do get a little bit of a pullback as oil is pulling back something uh, like this, and yeah, move back through one and close above one would now put it into high peaks and high troughs. That would be encouraging, telling me that there is buy the dip activity come back in, got back, coming back in. And if there was an influx of volume, that would put it into more of a buy. But that would assume, of course, it is the best thing on the market on that day. And, uh, and I couldn't find anything else, anywhere else to put the money. So uh, positive, uh, but probably still, still needs a little bit of cooking there, Roberto. Uh, what I will do, just to remind myself, if anything, that I do have the ability to look at these things. So ARB in here. Uh, and what we'll do here is leverage off Thomson Reuters' Refinitive Icon product which goes and takes the broke consensus, so it collects all the broker uh, ratings, price targets, and each of their forecast estimates going out into the future. So you can see uh, we've got the full year FY22 there, that's the current financial year, not completed. Uh, and then we've got 23, 24, we do have a few estimates for 25, uh, but not filling up enough, I guess, to populate that cell. And then we have some historical numbers here. Uh, we can also see things like their growth rate or the forecast growth rate through here. Uh, we can see things like their price to earnings ratio. Uh, we can see things like their dividend yield through here. Uh, we can also 
uh, get an idea of the average price target for this company. And their average price target is $48.66. That compares pretty favorably to the current price of $37.80 and provides therefore some 28.7% upside. Now this might be a little bit different from what you're seeing uh, on your, your, your uh, think markets platform right now uh, because it tends to be a, based upon yesterday's closing price. Okay. Uh, in terms of the brokers though, they do like the stock. We've got two strong buys, four buys, two holds and one sell. And uh, with that price target, they think there is some upside. I would suggest, however, that brokers are notoriously good at raising their price targets when a stock is bottom left, top right, and then notoriously bad at bringing those price targets down when the stock uh, changes trend and you end up with these price targets that are stuck higher and brokers not wanting to admit they are wrong as the price reverses. So take that with a little bit of a pinch of salt. Uh, what I can do is manipulate some of these numbers to try and understand what uh, my spreadsheet believes is fair value. And it'll work better for companies where we do have lots of estimates and probably not work as well for companies where we don't have as much information. Uh, in terms of the risk level for ARB, that would be something you would need to determine for yourself based upon your research of the company. Um, I, do, I do know a bit about it. I have covered it uh, on the call a few times and uh, I, I think you'd be silly to call that a low risk stock. I think you'd probably want to go moderate at least given what's going on uh, with um, supply chain issues, inflation uh, and the impact uh, that those things can have on consumers. In terms of their growth estimate, uh, we've got 14%. Obviously, there was a big bump there uh, during COVID. Uh, more, a more normal 14%, uh, a bit of a hangover here at minus three, uh, and then probably back to their long-term uh, average growth rate there of about seven. Um, net net two over the next two or three years is probably not, uh, probably not crazy, uh, but I'd almost give it the benefit of the doubt and maybe call that something like a three or a four or a five even. Uh, and just say that as we return more to their long, long run growth rate, uh, they'll probably do a bit better than 2%. Uh, but we can manipulate that in a, in a second. The other thing that we need to work out is our target PE, um, PE ratio, price to earnings ratio. And we do that typically by looking at historical um, measures of the PE. So what has, is, has the market been comfortable in paying in the past? And see the market has paid a great deal more in terms of the PE. Um, during COVID, uh, considerably less, and going forward, probably around about 23, 24 is the right number. What would I be prepared to, prepared to pay for this stock, for a stock with so little growth? Um, yeah, I think that's probably very generous. Um, so I don't think I want to change that too much. Uh, and, but I might be very, uh, also very generous and say that uh, maybe they'll grow a little bit better than that. And if I put five in here, um, it would suggest that based upon what I've just my estimates here, uh, that the fair value uh, for ARB and what the market is working on. So, because I, I update, I can update these in real time, uh, whereas a broker would lose a lot of face if they change their price target from say 48.66 down to 34.50, which is, let's face it, what the market is actually working on now, okay? Um, so potentially ARB not on the right side of, of, uh, of fair value or good value. Uh, based upon current prices. Now that's just an estimate based upon uh, the numbers that I have and some uh, some really uh, back of the envelope estimate estimates that I've made. Uh, let's have a look at the next one here, uh, BAPCOR. Let's pop, pop it in here. I, I fear we're going to be in a very similar situation because they're very similar stocks. Uh, and it's just the order of stocks that you've given me. It's not a, uh, I'm not doing this on purpose. Uh, but let's have a look at uh, BAPCOR. And I'm guessing the chart is uh, basically the same. And uh, look, it, it almost is, isn't it? Uh, in terms of we've got this uh, change of trend, uh, we've gone from buy the dip, uh, long-term averages supporting price, uh, really to now, um, it, unfortunately, resisting price. Uh, I will do the customary, uh, where's my support point? How much downside potentially is there before we may even see bounce? Uh, and therefore, is it worth holding? Uh, because I certainly can't buy it, call it a buy. And uh, I can do this one very quickly. Uh, and if, you, if you've got this stock, you just need to decide what is the most likely uh, path here for the share price. Is it to do something like this and then maybe bounce uh, and then maybe do this, I don't know, or maybe go higher again, uh, or is it to do this? Uh, and I think if we had to call these things, say scenario, uh, scenario one uh, and scenario two, uh, now scenario two is entirely possible, but I would suggest to you that scenario one is the more probable path here, uh, given that trends, uh, trends, trends extend, don't they? Trends continue until they don't. Uh, in terms of what levels would we need to see uh, to, feel, to feel better about these things, 
uh, this, this company, I think we need to get above the pink zone. So if we look at that pink zone there, uh, that would be the 30, 34, 34, 34, there it is, uh, 34, 644. Let's call it 650, close above 650 would put it in uh, back in the right direction. Uh, until then, I'm a pass. Uh, if you don't have it, and I bought a line sell, as, as you saw uh, the reasons for that. And I wish I had better news for people, and I wish you know, I could say buy everything that you've put in front of me uh, to make you feel better about what you're holding, um, but I don't think that's the point of this, this presentation. Okay, back court. let's uh, do the same thing. So let's go brokers have a buy, uh, brokers coincidentally, or not coincidentally, have a price target that is 28.3% higher than where the current price is because, geez, they're good and increasing those price targets when the stock is in, up, in an uptrend. Uh, four strong buys, four buys, two holds. Now I would suggest to you that, uh, that uh, let's face it, these brokers, and they are the biggest names in the business and they have a bunch of clients who are investing money. Uh, isn't it baffling? Isn't it baffling that uh, there are no cells on a chart that looks like this? And if anybody's got an explanation uh, to, 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 to just put my mind at ease as to why the brokers are unanimously not sell and yet, there's somebody selling. <laughs> I'll tell you what, somebody is selling. Um, so and I don't want to get too, um, too caught up on this idea of uh, the faith we put in some of these broker estimates. Um, they tend to be very good on the way up, not as good on the way down. Let's try and do some of our own work. I'm going to turn that back to off because it is the default setting. And we're going to therefore use the broker's uh, estimates for growth. Similar situation to Bapcor's ARB. And that 6% actually I think is the right level. It's a, it's a good long-term uh, measure and it's a conservative uh, measure of their uh, growth rate. Uh, I would definitely leave this on moderate. I don't think we can go low. Uh, straight away I can see that the PE on this one is substantially less uh, than ARB. And that actually makes this one more attractive than ARB straight away. Uh, but in terms of the valuation, uh, because you know, historical PEs tend to be lower, um, it's not going to get much love here from the, from the valuation uh, formula. Uh, so if we, now this is, this is the interesting bit, right? So if we said, okay, let's make this the same target as ARB, right? Let's say, because let's face it, the growth is about the same. Uh, so it's 23.6. So why would uh, one have a lower PE? And you start to say, well, okay, well, compared to ARB, back course actually started to look cheap. But in terms of its historical uh, PEs and its forecast PEs, if I go dynamic here, this probably gives a, a much better idea uh, because this is comparing all of the PEs here and it's taking the median of all of those PEs. Um, I would say it's still overvalued here by about 6% uh, and therefore it can struggle. Uh, let's have a look at the next one, OBL. Uh, Omni Bridgeway uh, looks pretty interesting, actually. I like these candles. So if you think how hard of a time the market's had it over the last few weeks, and to see these white candles coming in, I think it's actually really impressive. Uh, and then we've got these high peaks and high troughs coming in as well. And really, the only thing we need to deal with now is, is this uh, pesky uh, overhead resistance here uh, from uh, two things, the uh, long-term downtrend zone uh, and this, uh, this level here. So uh, this one I can confidently say uh, that if you had it, you would hold it. I think there's enough evidence there of buy the dip, of demand sneakily coming into the market. Now, having said that, it looked like it was sneakily coming into the market here as well, didn't it? And that didn't turn out so well, uh, but maybe uh, second time's a charm. So uh, certainly if we, if we do push up and, and close, say above that, I'll give you, uh, what's this level here, that high there, 360 assets, it's called 370. Uh, or better, it, this this will be a nice, um, you know, higher swing low here, uh, and that would be constructive for a continued rally. So, look, if I didn't have this one, uh, I would certainly hold on to it. It's not a buy yet. There's, there's still plenty of work that needs to be done. But if you if you're stuck in it, um, I think you, you're going to do do uh, better than you thought out of that one. Uh, Neo Metals. Uh, now, this is, this is an interesting one because I've almost written this one off, uh, and it's actually popped back up. So that's a good sign. Uh, now, last time we talked about Neo Metals, I reckon was somewhere, I'm gonna say around here, uh, around here, and we started set to say, look, something like, um, you know, manage uh, manage uh, our exits. Um, so that, that when we say that, but that, that indicates, look for, be super attentive and be super ruthless uh, for any sign of supply in the market. Those uh, types of black candles, um, you know, lack of response from the demand side, lower peaks, lower troughs to, to, to manage our exit. Uh, so that means one third out. Doesn't mean all out, it means one third out. And then it's up to you to, I guess, 
uh, either ask me again on a Tuesday or, or, or find your own ways to, to manage, uh, manage the rest. Uh, but I do believe it's worth hanging on to some of these. Uh, we, we do have a move back into uh, high peaks and high troughs, which is fantastic and very impressive. Uh, we do have the short-term trend zone re-establishing. That's great. And the long-term trend, let's face it, was um, was never under threat. So that's all, always good. Uh, you know, we actually held nicely above it here. And then we actually held uh, this zone here. So this, uh, we, we mentioned it before, this idea that an old uh, an old point of supply, okay, and, and the bigger the point of supply, uh, the more likely it is to act as, you know, a future uh, point of demand. Uh, and that's exactly what we saw. That's exactly what we saw. So this is all good. I'm pretty happy with this one. It's definitely uh, a stronghold for me. Uh, the question is whether we would we would buy more. And I think uh, on, on, a, on, an, on an appropriate candle, I think you can do that. Uh, so what is the candle that we're looking at here? Uh, and where, where should it occur? Uh, this is, I should say first, this is not the greatest. This is not great. <laughs> okay, the fact that it's happened below this is not great either. Okay, but I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt on the basis of, of this and this. So not only do we get out in, 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 uh, in smaller amounts, we, we get back in in smaller amounts as well. So um, let's say I had $10,000 to put on new metals, whatever, that's my portfolio uh, waiting for, for a new, new company. I would not be putting all $10,000 on, on this next buy. I would be putting literally one third of that at the most. Okay, and, and the signal we're looking for is going to be one of two candles. And imagine that you're seeing these occurring right there. Okay, so if we see that, pattern in that zone, uh, I would upgrade this one to a buy. Until then, it's a very solid hold for me. Uh, and just a little bit of uh, colour here, Emma, this one's from Emma, and she said she got into near metals at 51 and 76 on the back of discussions on the call. I hope that was due to me, uh, because I know a bunch of other experts on the call did not call this a buy. In fact, they, they passed on it. Uh, I had a plan to buy as it, it was up 50% on average price each occasion, but it's raced ahead. Is it Good time to take some profits. Okay, I think I've answered that question. So um, the time to take profits was sort of back here uh, uh, in, in the order of magnitude of a third, but I think um, you're holding the rest. And if anything, looking to add some more Emma. Okay, now what could change that? Emma's got this one. So let's do a little bit more analysis for Emma and tell, tell her what could change this idea of adding more. Okay, so I'd be concerned if we got beneath this level here. Okay. So if we closed beneath this level here, and I'll give you the, the exact number, Emma. Now this uh, this low here, that's the low uh, 132. So if we close below 132, that would be a signal to exit another third of your position. Uh, and then if we were to close probably, say, below this one here, uh, that low there, 117, I think you would be out the final third, uh, assuming you, you're out a third. But uh, if you had to exit another third, probably, uh, then you know, picking another level, say below a dollar. Okay, and, and worst case scenario, you've got a third, a third, a third, and you're still locking in some amazing profits there. Uh, wow, thanks, Craig. I think Craig's either referring to Woolworths or talking about how amazing Ask the Experts is at the moment. Uh, let's assume it's Woolworths, uh, and I think I can hold this one. Uh, I think I can hold this one. I think there's enough in it to call it a hold. Um, this is this is all good through here. You know, look at the candles. And we talked about whether uh, the market is accumulating or the market is distributing, whether the market is buying on the dip or, or selling on the rallies. And I think there is a bit of buy the dip going in here. Look at these, these wonderful white candles. Uh, we're actually moving back into high peaks and high troughs. So this is a good one. Uh, I'm happy to hold it. I don't think there's enough in it to call it a buy just yet, although it's not far away um, if you wanted a really boring stock for your portfolio. And some, but don't take that the wrong way. I'm not saying Woolworths is bad. Sometimes boring is good, especially in the current environment. Um, but I think it's it's looking pretty handy here. Okay. Uh, oh, look, even if well, I was about to say if I squint, maybe I could call it a buy. Again, a, bo a boring portfolio buy, long-term self-managed super fund stuff. Um, I like, mm, this this here, this here is a problem. Uh, I'd say let it let it close above that because that you know, a significant amount of supply came in there, and until we're we're past that point. I think it, we'll just call it a hold for now. Well, let's keep moving. Uh, Metcash, uh, equally as boring, thanks, Doug. And uh, look, boring stock, but a great looking chart. So <laughs> this one looks great, doesn't it? Hold it, absolutely hold it. Again, uh, one of those boring portfolio stocks that I'm quite happy for you to own. Uh, we can see that on a PE of about 15, uh, which historically I think is, is uh, holding it to a very um, uh, sort of tough account, I'd almost go, oh, I was going to say almost go here, uh, which will push this down a little bit. Uh, and EPS, 4%, I think that's a bit bearish. 
I'd be happily happy to give it uh, five or six. I think I think that's a little bit bearish. So I'd go here. And I, I did the research on this one not that long ago. On button, I'll turn that on. Uh, well, lo and behold, I didn't mean that to happen, but uh, we get met cash is fair value. Uh, let's have a look at Woolworths just out of curiosity now. Yeah, that's surprising for me. I. I I honestly would have assumed that Metcash had better growth than Woolworths, but the brokers are saying differently. Hmm. I think 10's a stretch for Woolies. That's just my opinion. Uh, and if we go F and change this back, I'm missing something here at the moderate. This is where I, I need to reset to default, don't I? Okay. Look, I, I don't think they I don't think they need to be as high as moderate, um, which basically doubles the discount rate. I'm happy to go low on Woolworths, and I'm happy to go low on uh, Metcash. So for all intents and purposes, uh, Woolies is probably a little bit overvalued, which fits with my initial thesis that uh, Metcash, I believe, is cheaper than Woolworths uh, and probably backs up the chart. In a word, the chart looks fantastic. Uh, if you uh, have it, hold it. If you don't have it, then I'm happy to buy it here. Whereas Woolworths probably needs a little bit more polishing. Uh, G'day, Carl, says James. Sorry, I'm joining late this week. That's OK. Uh, wanting to know about CSL. Let's have a quick look. It's not as good as Woolworths. You know, it's a similar pattern through here, isn't it? But it's not as good. I think there's a significant amount more work to do. In the meantime, in terms of a bounce, in the meantime, uh, long-term trend, short-term trends are still down. Uh, I, I do believe we've probably seen the low for the time being. Uh, but let, again, let's just talk about probabilities. What's the, what's the most likely scenario from here? Uh, this or this? Uh, and again, you know, you, you just decide. I, I don't need to tell you scenario one or scenario two. And I think you'd have to say uh, scenario two is the most likely path for CSL for the time being. Okay, let's check this one out. It probably deserves a moderate. Probably deserves a moderate. Although I do think they've turned the corner. Do I think? Do, do, do I think there's a, um, a low, moderate, or high risk of them hitting 15%? I probably need to go somewhere between low and moderate in terms of the PE. I think um, 30 is a bit a bit cheap. Uh, I think the market's prepared to pay a bit more than 30, and I, th I have worked off uh, about 33 and a half here. Um, just, just that's just my my own belief based upon the research. Let's turn that off, and this will start to make sense. There we go. Uh, and even if I went moderate, I wonder what that does. I uh, went really conservative, so somewhere between those two extremes is probably the right uh, valuation for uh, CSL, James. In my in my humble opinion. Uh, so let's turn that to low. Uh, you get you know 298, and then you got uh, two 278. Split the difference, you get 288, uh, which is again below the brokers because they stay uh, stubbornly high uh, for strong buys, nine buys, one hold. So hopefully that just gives you some colour around that chart, James. Now next one is from Helen. She's asking for ResMed. Let's punch it in here. With a few healthcare stocks today, a few. Defensives in there with some of those supermarkets as well. Interesting. Uh, and we'll go over here and we go ResMed. How am I going for time? Not too bad. Tricky, isn't it? That's a, that's a tricky one. What I need to do is probably do a poll. What is the most likely um, path here? Let's call this uh, scenario one. Uh, actually, I wish I put scenario three because there is a scenario three when you think about it. Okay, and that is just it. Okay, let's go to. Okay. But there is a scenario three. And scenario three is it continues to go sideways. Uh, so answer the poll and tell me where you think it's going. And uh, we'll get back to that in a sec. If you can't find the poll, that's okay too. Okay, my opinion on ResMed is um, there's probably enough in it to hold it just for now because we do have uh, an uptrend through here. We do have some nice candles coming in, uh, but we are being resisted significantly uh, by this area here. Now, if I was able to see able to see a close above this high here. That high there is 34.71. So if I sort of close at 34.71 or better, uh, then I would be comfortable that we are actually gonna break out of this uh, move, uh, this, this consolidation zone here and probably head to higher levels. Uh, until then, I'm happy to go for a hold. I can't call it a buy. Uh, but there is a risk that scenario two does, does pop in. Uh, so scenario one, if you're wondering, would be something like that. Scenario two would be something like that. And quite often um, through these consolidation faces, it's you know it's a 50-50 bet uh, out of those. Poll for the for the eight people, well done. They actually figured out how to answer. Uh, now ten, uh, actually interestingly, I'm surprised by this. Sixty percent 
have said scenario one, and then 40% uh, have said scenario two, so there you go. Uh, in terms of the fundamental valuation, I don't know enough about ResMed. Unfortunately, I haven't done research recently to say whether it should be high, moderate, or low. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt, go with low healthcare stock. Uh, that's off, so we're going with a custom growth estimate, sorry, a, a broker growth estimate here of 11%. Probably not unreasonable. Let's go PE here, dynamic F, and that changes it to uh, 31.1, which I think is a very low, a very conservative estimate. So I'm going to say, look, it's it's about fair value. It's about fair value. The market has paid significantly higher, significantly higher, significantly higher for Resmed in the past. And if the market, you know, it starts to feel that they want to pay those multiples again. Um, Yes, there's going to be some upside. Okay, if we split the difference uh, and look at um, uh, the whole period, so future and past, uh, then th there's definitely some upside there. Okay, but I'm into trends, right? So I'm into trends. I know this is hist historical. That's historical. That's why I don't put as much uh, faith in it. And that's current, and that's future, right? So um, it it's about finding a, a balance here. So somewhere around about that 33 is probably right. So I think uh, it's, it's on the right side of fair value, uh, long story short. That is ResMed, let's go for SGR, oh, Star Entertainment Group. Um, yeah, look, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go uh, downtrend, downtrend. Uh, oh, is there enough to hold it? Is there enough in it to hold it? Well, I'm encouraged by the, the white candles. Uh, but let's face it, it's, it's losing this battle, isn't it? Even though the white candles are in there. <sighs> buy, hold, or sell, buy, hold, or sell. Okay, I, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go hold if you'd had nothing else to buy, right? Um, interest rates are, well, you're getting nothing on a term deposit, right? You're probably getting a better dividend yield on this. However, if we close beneath uh, this level here, that low there, 318, that low there, 314, so anything below here, um, then I would have to uh, downgrade it to a sell. Okay, so anything beneath, any close beneath there, I would go a sell for now. I'm just gonna squeak in with a hold. Uh, that is for Jack. Thank you, Jack. Uh, NTO, Nitro Software, uh, NTO, uh, while I'm doing that, just so Jack doesn't get upset with me, just in case he's got it and he wants to know. Let's pop that in and we'll head back to NTO. Ah, this one's uh, looking really scary. Um, obviously down, down. Where, where did it all go wrong? Actually, really not until here. I, I would have said literally up until that candle uh, that, that you're okay. I mean, even here and here, I think you're okay. Uh, so all of this is okay. Uh, and then uh, once you see this, this, this gap and close beneath that uh, long-term trend zone, I think um, you would have no choice but to do something like that. You'd be absolutely remiss if you didn't. Uh, I would say uh, certainly on this, this is your next signal, because this is a learning exercise, right? Now, what are the signs we're looking at? Yeah, next gap down is not great. It's small rally faded here. Um, really, that candle there, uh, that is that is just, I could not uh, continue to hold the same position after seeing that. And, the, and then maybe the breaking of this low here, see this little low here, uh, that would be the final third for me. That would be the, the last, Straw, and what am I even saying? The fact you're so far beneath the, the, the trend zone now, um, the fact that we've rejected, I can't, I can't even say sell a third here. Um, so uh, if I say minus one third here, I, I think that is too late. I think that is too late. I, I would say that that is not valid. I think really here you would have gone minus one third. You would not have even given, a, given the benefit of the doubt there. You would have said, no, no, I'm going to do the rest. Okay, what is the point of me um, going through this? this? Because you can't go back in time and fix it. The point is uh, that uh, when, when, when stocks that we know we love and think are fantastic and to boot are going up, uh, you know, that's that's fine and everything, but we need to have a strategy for getting out. Uh, and I believe that literally on this, this candle here, um, you should have been out of that, okay? And you would have um, staved off a significant diminishment of your capital from approximately 280 now down to 120. I know that doesn't bring the money back, uh, but hopefully the next time we're in that situation, uh, we can we can you know use some of this, these learnings. Okay, let, let's go for a buy, hold, or sell now. 
Um, and I'm drawing in that line because I'm, I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, where is that point where we might see some demand, some speculative demand coming in? And again, you have to say, well, what is the most likely scenario if we said to this time that was scenario one, or a miracle happened for Nitro. Everybody all of a sudden woke up and realized what a bargain Nitro is. They just said, you know what, that's that Nitro, and I haven't thought about it for about uh, six months. But come to think of it, that is the stock I have to buy today over all other stocks. Uh, and let's call that scenario two. So what is more likely? Uh, we could just continue in the current trend with black candles almost every day. Absolutely no sign that anybody thinks this is worth buying. Um, and, and we go down to S1 or we uh, miraculously go up to S2. And I think you can answer your own question on that one. Uh, buy, hold or sell, I think that's a sell. Uh, let's have, have a quick look at SGR and it will be quick I can't comment, comment on this. Um, I'm going to go moderate for, for just what they're doing. Uh, and if we go, that's correct. Uh, we don't have any earnings. Okay. We don't have any earnings there, but we will have some next year. So that's okay. We can change that. Uh, we need to get the PE right, uh, which I think 14 is probably on the low side. Let's go F15, pretty close. It doesn't look, it's not, it's not, it's not screaming bargain to me. It's not screaming bargain. Uh, and even if I gave it the benefit of the doubt and went low, and I don't think that's right, it's still not screaming bargain. Uh, Nitro, uh, this one will, I'm pretty sure, not have any earnings. And that's not a problem uh, when the market is happy to pay about 80 times earnings on average for technology shares, not a problem. But it does become a problem when the market says, no, I'm not prepared to pay uh, crazy multiples for tech shares anymore. And you can see we're not making any money out uh, for the uh, estimate period here out to FY25. So I can't give you a valuation on something that doesn't make money. Uh, and I can't even give you an estimate PE because we're not even close. And that is Nitro's ultimate problem. Let's face it, the fact that it is not making uh, any money and not going to make any money anytime soon. Let's head back to the charts. And I know that's all a bit depressing, isn't it? <laughs> but uh, I'm just calling it as I see it. Uh, Lachlan says, if I have time, CE1, I've got time flat line, buy, hold, sell. Um, I can't really see a lot of reason to hang on to it. Uh, a little bit of volume here that's encouraging, trying to find the positives, but it, it faded here real quick, didn't it? I mean, any hope it got here, geez, it faded fast and it shouldn't do that. If, if, if it's any good, it shouldn't fade that fast. Oh, I just think this is a non-event. It's a, it's, it's a non-starter. Uh, I, I can't get to a hold, I'm sorry. Uh, on Kalima. Uh, if I sell it, it's going to do this tomorrow, no doubt. But uh, come, why would you hold that? I'm not sure. It doesn't look fantastic. I'm sorry. Lachlan, he says um, it's an oil producer. Um, uh, he actually wants a fundamental on that one. So let's see if we can give him one. The chart's not terrible. It's just not inspiring. So let's have a look here. CE1, Kalima Energy, and we do have a broker. So there is one broker out there doing research, uh, but we can see how sketchy the estimates are. So uh, it makes it hard for me to give you an accurate, uh, an accurate reading. Uh, but that's interesting. The fact that this broker believes it's gonna make uh, nine cents uh, in calendar year uh, 2022. So didn't make any money last year because the financial years are calendar years here. So let's change that to that one. And I'm still not going to get anything because I don't have anything here and here. Okay, I don't have enough data. Sorry, Lachlan. There's not enough data from the brokers for the spreadsheet to work, unfortunately. Let's have a look at the next one. Is This is from Sandeep. Uh, Sandfire and Yan Coal. Very interesting at the moment, Yan Coal. Obviously, big drop today. Did go ex-dividend. Uh, but energy prices down significantly overnight, highlighting just how volatile uh, this, this sector is right now, why your bets should be very small. Okay, Sandfire, let's have a look at the PE first. You can see just how cheap this one is. PE of seven, outrageous. Uh, you might say, well, it sounds cheap, but okay, the market in the past, let's go sort of pre-COVID, was somewhere between seven and 12. So it, it tends to trade on, on a lower PE because it is a resources stock. Forward looking PE, I think somewhere around sort of um, eight or nine is probably reasonable. The spreadsheet saying nine, I'm happy to go with that. In terms of the earnings outlook, let's change that back and go EPS is minus 1%. Uh, now, uh, the brokers, you can see just how bearish brokers are on uh, mining stocks in general, right? So they're, they're, we're cycling a big bump here in uh, earnings because uh, it's a 
copper producer. Uh, they're saying copper prices will probably moderate, or more than moderate, over the next few years, and then maybe bounce back after that net net zero um, growth. This balances out these two, doesn't it? And you end up with that. So it's probably right. The valuation is probably right. 560 um, certainly doesn't. It's not expensive. Brokers are way higher at 695, uh, and it would just be whether you go custom growth, something like let's say um, you know five percent growth is more appropriate. And if it can achieve five percent growth and not the minus one the brokers are expecting, um, then it's starting to look crazy cheap down here. Okay, but that's an if. And of course, we don't know what's going to happen with uh, with commodity prices. And the next one is uh, Yan Cole. I'm not sure how much research we'll have on this one, but we'll have a look. And we'll, while that's loading, let me quickly go back to the Sandfire chart, uh, SFR. Uh, ooh, yeah, that's, a, that's an issue. Is there enough to hold it? Is there enough to hold it? There's, there should be a support point here. Uh, we don't want to see it trip below this. That load there, 502, so close below $5. And then I would say there's not enough to hold it. There's just no demand. Look, there's just no demand. It's a complete demand vacuum. Look at the candles. They're, they're, nobody is stepping in to buy this dip. Uh, and that's concerning. That's a real worry. This area in the past, let's face it, uh, is very clearly a major point of demand. Uh, and major points of demand tend to act as uh, major points of demand in the future, all right? Uh, but we have to put a question mark on, on that because uh, you know it's yet to be seen. Okay, so I'm going to just squeak in as a hold because I know a few people are in this. So um, there's no point telling you to sell if we're this close to a major point of demand. That would be silly. Okay, the, the time to sell was was on black candles, and I think we actually talked about uh, this previously about lightening the load on this one. We've given you a point uh, that you would sell beneath, and I just need to finish off by saying, well, what are the candles here that we need to see in this area? And um, you know, I won't re redraw them perfectly, but um, it would be uh, obviously these, and uh, imagine they're uh, black with hollow uh, insides, and seeing that in here uh, would give me great hope. Uh, we'd also need to see a, a big pop up in volume, uh, because as I said, there is a demand vacuum right now. So this is actually a really clear sign uh, that there is a demand vacuum. There's supply in the system, we know that. Uh, you see prices going down, but uh, it's more of a demand vacuum. We've just lost all of our buyers. Uh, and you know that's the case because of, of the declining volume, okay? Um, because let's face it, uh, volume is buying and selling, okay? So we know there's supply in the market. And we know there's lots of supply. How do we know there's lots of supply? Well, the price is plummeting. Okay, but there's very little volume. So think what think what that means. The sellers are not finding cash. They're not hitting cash out there that wants to buy this. Okay, if there was a great deal of selling and a great deal of buying, yep, there'd be lots of volume. Okay, but there isn't. So there's just the market is just totally totally step back from this one, uh, and that is a bit concerning. Uh, so to tell us that the demand is coming in, so to, to say that demand is back. Um, to soak up that supply, we would see a spike in volume. Okay, uh, to tell me that transactions are occurring, yes, uh, but the demand is back in, especially with those candles. Uh, I'm just going to go on a hold on the basis that it's uh, it's so close to that zone, and the valuation didn't look terrible. Uh, this one here, Yan Cole, don't have any estimates. Sorry, can't give you a, a reading on that one, but I can give you a technical. Uh, let's talk about managing our exits. I think you. you be crazy not to manage your exit, and I think the the, the, the side was here. This is your first uh, minus third, uh, so that's minus one slash three. Uh, and depending on where it closes today, you could um, almost go a second because of this gap. I don't like this gap, so that that's a worry for me. Um, I would say though, let's say uh, because this is this candle's not finished, go I'll do an update on this, and we might see this change. Now, if we see uh, a candle that looks like this, so if this candle turns into this, uh, then I would say hold. Uh, if it continues to look uh, current or worse, and we've got the update coming through in a sec, there you go, it's got worse. Okay, so this is now very, very clear. And I only get uh, hourly updates, so if they're a little bit behind, they're a little bit behind. Uh, so this is 100%, no doubt, minus a third for me here. And uh, you might keep a third just on the basis that uh, we are here, okay? Uh, in this uptrend, okay? Now, if you missed out on, on selling that third, the first third, you might go two thirds here, okay? So it's a take profit on 
Yan Cole, or as we like to say here, managing our exits. If we're lucky enough to get one right, um, you know, we need to be attentive to signs in the market that supply is coming in. That's all we're questioning here. Is supply coming in? Okay, and is there enough of it coming in to turn the price around? Okay, and that's how we manage our exit. Well, that's giving us a tribute to manage our exit. What is the future of BNPL, specifically Zip and Hum? Well, I'll just do technicals. Uh, I can't answer that question in, in, this for, in this format of a presentation, unfortunately, Vivek. Um, what is the future of BNPL? I don't know. Uh, what is the future of Zip? Uh, it looks like it's going lower. I can't see any demand coming into the system. Uh, having said that, there is a bit of a level, probably around here, where we may see a bit of a bounce of around $1, uh, and that would be your only hope. But there has been no reason to buy Zip, and there has been, just as equally, no reason to even own Zip uh, for a good six months now, probably more. So um, it's, it's, you know, don't get better, get better. Uh, follow the charts, believe the charts. Uh, then we have HUM, uh, that's the code on HUM, I'm guessing. HUM, uh, not as bad as Zip, uh, but certainly not a buy. I, ca I can't really call that a hold either. It, uh, it's just flat line. Uh, let's do the next one here, which is ANZ versus Westpac. Okay, that's a, a tricky one to answer in such a short space of time. Uh, let's have a look at the charts. ANZ and Westpac. Uh, Westpac looks the better of the two on the chart. Uh, Andrew says, check out MAY, which I know is flying. Hopefully it's still flying. Yes, it's still flying. Okay, Andrew, I'm glad you brought this one up because we've talked a lot today about managing your exits. And I, I won't do a poll because it's going to take up too much time. Uh, but I would ask you, do, do we need to manage our exits on this one? You know, and hey, half the battle is finding a winner. The other half of the, that battle is hanging on to that winner to get as much as you can out of it. And whilst Yen Cole, we've had a great run on, I know we have, um, you know, we were starting to take, to take um, profits off the table because the market is telling us to. The market is telling us to do only one thing on this one, and that is to hang on. Uh, so thank you for popping that one in, Andrew. Uh, QXR, this one is for uh, Andrew also. It looks great. Uh, look, today's not a great candle, but the market's lousy. I'm gonna give that one the benefit of the doubt and call that a very strong hold. Uh, look, Probably not a buy. You know the candles I like to see, Andrew, before I call it a buy. Uh, HLS, uh, a little, bit of a boring stock. Um, I think it's worth a hold. I don't think there's anything uh, terribly sinister in that one. I think you can hang on to that. Great performance today. Uh, hang on to that one. I think that's a hold. Uh, AS2, I know I'm whizzing, guys, but obviously we're, we're way over time. Uh, that's more than a hold. I think that's a borderline buy, uh, but probably, probably buy, buy pullbacks on this one. Uh, maybe into 40, you might see a little pullback there. You know the candles I want to see. I've drawn them a number of times today. Uh, that one is also for Andrew. He's on the ball. I might call it quits here because there are about 30 stocks still to go. and We're clearly not going to get through them. And I do need to finish up here. Um, uh, we are back next Tuesday, so uh, I'll take a copy of the stocks that I didn't get to. We'll start with those next week. Um, obviously, at Think Markets, uh, we do have a great offering here. So if you're not already a client of ours, Make sure uh, you give us a call or head to the address there and join up. We do have, as I said, uh, fantastic customer support and a great product offering, and of course, my analysis. Um, if you do join up as a result of uh, seeing me at ATE or just mention Ask the Experts, uh, we do have 10 free trades going at the moment. You'll get an extra 10 free trades just for saying you saw me today. And of course, we have our wonderful referral program also going, where if you are already a client and refer four friends, you will get 200 trades for free, that is amazing. And no doubt, like me, you know, four people who are still trading with their bank right now, still paying $20 minimum for a trade, and that is crazy. So get them over to Think Markets uh, and you get the benefit of those trades. If you're watching me on YouTube, thanks for joining me today. Hopefully you got lots out of it. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and let us know that you like what we're doing. Otherwise, it has been a pleasure chatting with you today. Hopefully you got lots out of it. All the best for trading until we catch up again. Bye-bye for now.